All right, so tonight we're going to talk about um, slopes and how to find it with a missing coordinate. But I thought you would like my cool hat. I got this cool hat when I was in Sydney, and we did the Harbor Bridge Climb. We'll have to get to this when we talk about uh, functions a little bit later, but we actually climbed up this bridge to the top. I guess which function family would you think this is from the bridge climb? We can relate that to mat math, right? We climbed all the way up this bridge, all the way up to the top and turned around and came back. It was super, super cool. While you were at school working hard, I was climbing a bridge. Okay, so um, we're gonna look at um, our notes here. Write down your date and it's called slope with a missing coordinate. So we've talked about um, how to find slope with two points. Um, and in Algebra 1, they like to give you um, the slope with a missing coordinate, um, or give you the slope, a missing coordinate, and you have to find out what that coordinate is. So we're going to look at how to do that. Um, we've already said previously that to find slope, we have to subtract the, one, the rise, which is the y's, over our runs, which is the x's. So this is our um, formula for finding slope. So basically we want to plug in what we have. A line passes through the points negative 5 and n and negative 6 and 6 that has a slope of 4. So let's see, we know this is our x, we can say x1, y1, and this is our x2, y2, and we know this is our slope, our m. So we're going to plug it into um, our values here. So we know our m is 4, so we're going to place the m with 4. We know our y2 here is 6 minus our y1, which is the variable n. That gets placed over my x2, which is negative 6. And subtract that from my x1, which is negative 5. So basically, we got to solve what we know. Um, so we know that two negatives make a positive. So I have 4, or we can say 4 over 1, equals 6 minus n over, and then here we have negative 6 plus um, 5, which is negative 1. Um, so we can think about solving this a couple different ways. Um, we're trying to find n here. So um, this looks like a proportion, and we could actually solve it as such if we wanted to, where we cross multiply here. So that would be 1 times 6 minus n, which would just give us 6 minus n. And we make that equivalent to 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And then we just solve for n. and subtract our 6 here, and subtract our 6 here, and we'll get negative 10 equals negative n. And then, of course, we can't have a negative variable, so we can divide through or multiply through by negative 1. And so my missing value here is 10. So I can also take a minute and make sure that's right. So here we have y2 minus y1, so that should be 6 minus 10 over x2 minus x1, negative 6 minus negative 5. And so then when I solve this, I'll get negative 4 over negative 1, which gives me a slope of 4, which is correct. It should have a slope of 4. Okay? So um, a lot of times proportions work out best when solving these, and sometimes you can just look at them and figure them out. So let's look at another example. Okay, so again, this is the same type of problem. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we'll go through and identify our slope, which is our m. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. Um, so we're just going to plug in each part. So my m is 3. And then we have uh, x, y2 is negative 4 minus y1, which is t, over x2, which is 8, minus x1 is 6. Um, and again, we can put that as a ratio. 
So we're going to get 3 over 1 equals negative 4 minus t over 8 minus 6 is 2. So then we can just do some cross multiplying here. We have 1 times negative 4 minus t, which is just that. And then 3 times 2, which is 6. And then we're going to solve for a t by adding 4 over. It's going to give me 10. And this time I have negative t equals 10. And of course we can't leave me t negative. So we'll have negative 10 as our answer for t here. All right, so in this situation, our variable's here. So my x1 is going to be my variable. Let's see. I'm going to label each part, right? So we know the slope is 6. y2 minus y1, negative 5 minus 7, over x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is z. I always like putting a line through my z, otherwise it looks like a 2. And then we have over 1. Now this one's going to be a little bit different, okay? Um, we can go ahead and simplify this and say negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12, okay? Now when we cross multiply, we have to be very careful. This part's easy. We have 1 times negative 12, which is negative 12. But this time we have 6, and this is where a lot of mistakes are going to occur. This is 6 times 1 minus z. Um, and our previous example wasn't too bad because um, this number was always being multiplied by 1, so it's just itself. Same thing in this example here. Um, 1 was being multiplied by 6 minus n. But in this case, we don't have 1 anymore, we have 6 which means you have to distribute, and it needs to go to both items here. So this is going to be 6 minus 6z equals negative 12. And then we can solve for z, so it's our two-step equation. So we want to subtract the 6, and I get negative 18 equals negative 6z, and then just divide through by the negative 6, and then we have z equals positive 3. And again, we can plug that in and make sure I get a slope of 6. We have negative 5 minus 7, which was negative 12. And then with this being 3, I get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And then that would give me a positive 6. So I know I did that right. Okay. Um, let's try another one. Okay, so on this one, I want you to set it up and come up with the value for z. And the last one, solve this one.